Welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Pastor Beverly Malden. I am the pastor here at Gold Hill United Methodist Church in Gold Hill, North Carolina. If you are visiting us for the first time, would you please let us know where you are from and how we can best pray for you. We are a church that um, counts it a privilege to be able to pray for others. We have a prayer shed in our front yard. You can private message your prayer request through our Facebook page or uh, any way that is the easiest for you to contact us uh, through the preacher. But I promise you that when we get your prayers, we will attend to them immediately. We do have a sad announcement. Um, Wednesday, we have been praying for Eddie Small for months, and he finally gave up the fight and, and lost the battle to cancer on Wednesday. We had a beautiful uh, private service with the family yesterday due to the virus, but we are going to have a celebration of life this fall for him. And so if you just stay tuned to our Facebook page, all of that information will be posted there just as soon as the family feels that it is safe enough to have a large gathering to celebrate the wonderful life of Eddie Small. As always in our prayers, we remember our shut-ins. We remember Archie and Gail and Glenna and Shirley. And we lift all that are suffering with illness cancer and other diseases. We do have a church member, member that is also another church member going through chemo, but they have requested prayer, but they um, also have requested that we keep the name anonymous. And so um, just God knows who this person is. Um, if you have been engaging with us and enjoying um, our services, it, it, if you could consider possibly giving um, a gift to support uh, the ongoing mission of our church, as you know, it's been four months and we have not had an offering. Um, we unfortunately do not, we're not set up for online giving, but we still do things the old fashioned way here in the village and you can mail your gift to our treasurer and the address is post office just to Gold Hill, Post Office Box 52, Highway 52, Gold Hill, North Carolina, 28071. <clears throat> Here in Gold Hill, we follow the Wesley tradition to do good and to do no harm and to stay in love with God. Our face-to-face -face worship is planned to resume July the 5th. The guidelines are printed on our Facebook page. If you are not comfortable gathering, and we know that there are some that are not going to be ready in July, we will still have our online worship. It will be a little bit different, but you will still be able to find us on Facebook and YouTube, and those directions will, will be on the Facebook page when we kind of get all that worked out. Gold Hill United Methodist Church is a community of people loving God. I have been blessed to be able to serve with these wonderful people. And they love people and they love the world around them. Our mission here at Gold Hill is to grow the kingdom of God by reaching people and growing together as passionate followers of Christ. Welcome to worship. Now will you pray with me? Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you reign forever in that perfect love. I ask, Father, that you help us to always stay close to you and to be able to find the joy that our faith brings to us. I ask that you help us to be the living praise of your divine majesty. We know that you are the triune God. We, under, we do not understand the Trinity, 
but we know that we serve God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And we come together this morning to worship you and praise your holy name. You are the God of hope that ends all the hate of the world. You are the God that stays by us in our troubled time. You are the God that removes the fear and doubt from our lives. You are the God that forgives us no matter what we have done. You are the God that will never stop loving us no matter what we do or where we find ourselves. You are the God that is the promise keeper of the Old Testament and the New Covenant in the New Testament. You are the Almighty God and we are thankful that you love us and that you care for us. Help us, Father, to honor your love by loving others. Forgive us when we neglect to speak hope into a hopeless world, when we do not show the love of Christ to our neighbors that need to see it. Forgive us, Father, when we walk away without you and we don't shine your light for others to see. I ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins, to remove from us any pride and prejudice that goes against your love, and your children. I ask that you heal the divisions that separate us from one another in our families, in our communities, in our church, and help us to keep the unity of the, the triune God and the Spirit in, in the bond of peace that you have set for us. Father, help us to see one another through your eyes. Heal our nation, O Lord, as we are dealing with much unrest and hatred. I ask that you calm our restless hearts and bring peace back to our country. I ask you, Father, for all these blessings and plead for your mercy. Father, there are so many that need prayer at this time. Our shut-ins, Archie and Gail and Glenna and Shirley, and so many others that are at home that we don't know. Help them to know that someone cares. For the lonely, for the lost, for the broken, for the addict, for the abused and even the abusers, Father, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those that are facing cancer and going through treatments, for the sick, for the disabled, and the mentally challenged, Father, we place them at the foot of your cross. For the leaders of our nation and all over the world, I ask you, Father, to give them great wisdom. Keep them safe. Give them courage to do the right thing. In your mercy, O oh Father, Hear our prayers. In this moment, O oh God, we lift up our personal petitions for forgiveness and prayers for others. In your mercy, O oh Father, hear our prayers. Father, I ask mostly that you place us in the center of your will, that you keep us uh, from being distracted by the ways of the world. I ask that you um, open up our eyes and help us to get about the kingdom work that you placed us here for. Help us to be the disciples that Jesus called so long ago. Help us, Father, to be kinder and gentler people to one another, and to show your love in the best way that we can. We thank you, O oh God, for sending to us your Son. 
We thank you for Jesus coming to teach us how to love you, how to understand you, how to worship you, and how to just be still and to be in your presence. And God, we thank him for teaching us how to love one another instead of being such hypocrites, but to truly love from the bottom of our hearts. And we thank you, God, that he taught us how to pray when he taught his disciples. And we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verse 26 through 31. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak of in the daylight. What I whisper in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body. They cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy Father's Day to everyone who has a father. Some of us grew up with one. Some of our father's life ended way too early. And some of us never met our father for various reasons. But whatever your experience with your father was or was not, you had a father. So rejoice, be grateful, forgive if you need to, but remember him today. For those of us who were blessed to have a loving father that loved us and kept us safe, we were blessed to have a glimpse of how our Heavenly Father loves us. For those that did not have that experience, loving a God that we call Father can sometimes bring up uncomfortable feelings. If you did not feel loved, if you did not feel protected, if you did not enjoy the peace and comfort of being cared for, then God has a gift for you because God promises to be all of those things for you. Today's scripture tells us, do not be afraid. You are worthy. I will love and I will care for you. You cannot defeat fear if you don't understand how much our Heavenly Father loves us. And he loves us perfectly. This is why Jesus came, to give us a God with skin on, to show us that we are loved, and to teach us to love God and to love his people. In today's scripture, we're reminded of this promise from God, fear not. Even in the midst of a pandemic, of racial uproar, of civil unrest, of businesses being lost and lives being changed forever, we are to lean on God and not give in to fear. Where are we supposed to draw on the strength to do that? That comes from the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus has all authority over fear. So when fear rises up in us, we are to call on the power of the Holy Spirit to help us fight that fear and to take authority over it. Fear and worry and anxiety run deep in all of us. Satan's favorite thing to do is to bring fear and discord and disunity into our lives. Satan wants to drive us back to where we came from, but instead of moving us on forward where God is calling us to be. Satan will always attack us with fear, but we don't have to say yes to that fear. We don't have to invite it in to come sit down and have a cup of tea with us. We are to recognize it, we are to deal with it, and then we are to send it back to the fires of hell from where it came from. How? To cry out to God in your fear, and he will hear you, and he will draw you near to him. And I am so glad that we didn't have to get it all together, that we didn't have to arrive to perfection in order to get to a place to be able to call out to God. We don't even have to have full understanding of God to call his name. You, you, you maybe have just started out with this journey with God, or you might be a member of the Lifetime Christian Club. It doesn't matter where you are in your life right now with Christ. God hears you calling. When we allow our fear to distract us from God's love, we are giving power to that fear and we are taking power away from God. We fear many things. We fear being alone. We fear being unloved. We fear being abandoned. We fear losing. We fear taking chances, even on God. We fear economic hardship. We fear where our next meal may come or how we're going to pay the next light bill. We fear hurting others. We fear being hurt. We fear growing older. We fear dying too soon. We fear for our health. We fear the happenings of the world that the media throws at us every day. Do you know that the most frequent command in the Bible is to not be afraid. Do not fear, my little ones. Fear not. It's all through the Bible. Actually, it's in there 365 times to be exact. Every time an angel shows up, practically the first thing that they say in either Testament, Old or New, is fear not. It is said more than be holy, more than do good, Love your neighbor, don't sin, don't do evil. No one wants to be afraid. But it turns out that we have a hard time claiming these words. Do not be afraid. God gave us a do not be afraid for every day of the year. That tells me that God really wants us to lean in on him in the darkness and to have peace in our hearts, whether the times are good or whether the times are bad, whether we are on the mountaintop or in the valley. God desires for us to have peace in our hearts. The disciples that walked by the side of Jesus were, were not immune to fear. We are just like them. We are all the disciples in us, we're all faced by different enemies at different levels. We have human enemies, those who want, who have the power to kill the body, to, to kill us. We also have a darker enemy, which is much worse, Satan, who is battling for our ever immortal soul. But we have a heavenly father and a creator God that loves us so much with an amazing, perfect love that he can stomp out and wipe out any fear that lands on our heart. God, the creator, he is not our enemy. He is our best friend. He does want and desire what's best for us. If we are to stay near to him, listening for his voice and his direction, and stay in the center of his will so that not let the distractions of the world draw us into it, then we need not be afraid of anything. 
For God is ultimately in control of everything, and God loves us, and he seeks us out, and he forgives all who will accept his forgiveness and his love. God is the one who takes note of every sparrow in the sky and every hair on our head. It's hard to comprehend how intimately God is involved with our lives when we are so busy just trying to live life every day. But we can be secure in the knowledge that our Creator loves us dearly. In the first uh, book of John in chapter 4, we are told that God is love. And that there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Our God is a God of love, of perfect love. He is not a God of fear. Timothy told us in the first chapter, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Even though we, we all may suffer from fear, and we do, we are all called to do as John Wesley called us to do, and that is to move on towards perfection, to move on towards being more like Christ every day. And the more we are like Christ, the less we're going to fear. As we move towards that perfection, our fear will subside and we will become made more perfect by his perfect love. Trusting completely in the love of God has for us what it takes to drive out fear. Loving our God and loving our neighbor is part of the process of this moving on towards perfection. If we allow irrational fears into our lives, then we will be allowing fear, not love, to control our lives. If we look at all that society, also known as Satan, wants us to fear, then we would probably cower in our corner and never come out for to see the light of day. This is exactly what Jesus warned us against. He told his disciples, you are going to come up against opposition. But when you do, do not fear, because I'll be there. Satan wants us to fear, but Christ wants us to go forth boldly. You know, where no man has gone before, he wants us to go riding with him. But fear, fear paralyzes us. My fears kept me from saying yes to God when I was a young girl. And Satan won that battle once upon a time, but he has ultimately lost the war. One thing that gives many of us fear is that we're all fear, uh, afraid of, of being unmasked, afraid of letting our true colors shine sometimes, because our true self is not always Christ-like. And, and if, if someone were to discover what we're really like underneath there, well, they might not like us so much. Living in fear means believing deep down that if people really knew who we were, no one in their right mind would love us. And all people, all of us, suffer from this insecurity and this fear to a point, some of us more than others. <clears throat> as much as I feel that all of you here at Gold Hill love me, I would never release my fears and give a true and complete testimony of my once I was lost and now I am found story to you for fear that after you've heard the truth not because I don't think you would love me but I do believe you'd be super disappointed in your preacher but you got to remember I hadn't always been a preacher we all do need affirmation and approval at times in our life and when we can't get it from this world then we can find it in the words of Christ. He told us, I chose you. You did not choose me. Fear of not being accepted will lead many of us to make harmful decisions in our life. And this is why we must teach our children while they are young that they are worthy and just the way they are, that they are 
exactly the way God created them. We must walk our faith without fear so that our children can learn to face fears confidently and with the strength of Jesus and not fall into the wickedness and the lies of Satan. We must teach them also that Jesus died so that we never have to face our fears alone. They have to be taught to trust in Jesus. They have to be taught to not fear what Satan is bringing on to them in their life. They have to be taught that the spirit of truth is always by our side and the spirit of fear is not of God. And so when they are trembling, they have to have the faith that Jesus is there and that with one word, Satan will be gone and the fear will leave them and they will be back in that peace of, of the faith of Jesus Christ that only he can bring to them. God's power raised Jesus from the dead because of his great love for us so that his perfect love can drive out the fear in us. Satan had no power over the grave and he has no power over those who walk with Jesus. Yet, living in this kind of faith rather than fear, it does take practice which is why we have to show this to our children every day. It doesn't come naturally to sinful people. It doesn't even come naturally to some very faithful Christians sometimes. We must strive to continually live in step with the truth of who Jesus is. We must remind ourselves of the good news of the resurrection of Jesus and remind ourselves often, again and again, until it becomes like the air we breathe. It's just there. And we just know that the love of God is with us in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. It's just got to become a part of who we are. And, and, and that in itself will keep the fear that wants to come to us away. We, we must believe the words of Jesus when he said, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, for they cannot kill the soul. For if Jesus raised from the dead and you belong to Jesus, then what is the worst that can happen to you? In the light of eternity with Jesus and the weight of the glory there, even the hardest life of our great struggles on earth will one day seem like a bad night's stay at a roach motel. God knows of our brokenness and of our scars, and he is waiting to welcome us home, just like he did Eddie this week. You know there was a great reunion up there. So what do we have to be afraid of? Because in the end, we win. In the end, we see the glory that Eddie is surrounded with today. As Isaiah and the psalmist tells us, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And then he calls us in Luke, come and follow me. Could it be that we are afraid, really deeply afraid to listen to his calling and to accept God's love for us? Could it be that we are afraid of what God wants because it, we're just a little too attracted to what the, the world has to offer us? Are we afraid of being rejected by other people if we take on this life with Christ? Our Heavenly Father, He knows that we're trapped in all of these fears that circle in our head, and that's why He gives us grace. Rather than waiting on us to be ready, He came with His provenient grace, and He walked us right to salvation and forgiveness. And grace is power. And power is not meant to just sit there. It's meant to be used. Is the power over fear that God has given you just sitting there? Is it, is it like a used bicycle that you bought because once upon a time you were just going to cycle yourself to great health, but you left it in the garage because you're afraid of what people might think if you showed up to work or school on a bicycle, or, or you left it there because the bike paths went through neighborhoods you were not comfortable with? Do you leave the bike there because you have become afraid of what you can do with that bike. Lots of us, out of fear, say to God, thanks for the bicycle. It was just what I wanted. But then succumbing to the fear, we leave it out and it gets rusty and dusty and ages in the garage. 
Fear holds us back from the real freedom of a loving God who offers us when he calls us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And he loves us and wants us to walk through these fears of life. And he wants to be right there beside of us while we're doing the journey. And although it might take us a lifetime to gradually gather up the courage and to forsake our fears and to get on that bike and to take it for a ride, just imagine the great things that God has planned for each of us if only we will trust Him. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You're worth many sparrows. Those are the words of Jesus. On this day, we remember and honor our earthly fathers. The first day of summer, on the third Sunday after Pentecost, let us rest in the promise that the most important thing to celebrate on this day or any other day is the promise that God loves us so much and His heart's desire for us is to love Him and, and to let Him love us. And know in the love of those nail-scarred hands that His love will drive out all fear. So go and celebrate the day and celebrate it wrapped in the cloak of God's love. And fear not. For no matter where this day takes you, God has already been there. He has already cleared the path of anything that may cause you to stumble, including fear. If we will only keep our eyes on Him and not of this world. Amen. So let us go. Let us rejoice in this day that the Lord has made. For this is the gospel, my friends. That Jesus came, Jesus taught us, Jesus loved us, Jesus died for us. He rose from the dead, and he is coming back again one day to take us all home.